Today we're going to discuss how to get a consistent and good finish with a sandblasting machine. So the first thing we're going to hit is blasting techniques. Now I will tell you typically when I'm using one of these machines, I'm about three to six inches from my part. Uh, that I am blasting and as I'm going over the part, I can see where the finish kind of changes from how the part looked before, uh, which is how I know that I have hit that area and I can move and keep moving to the next areas to get them blasted. You don't want to hold in one area too long. This can cause a bit of hot spotting, which in the sandblast process is not easy to get out if you can get it out at all. It's very difficult to get out and even out. Whereas in a wet blast, it will actually even out pretty quickly. You don't want those dark spots. Let's say you're doing something like an anodize after the process. What happens is your anodize will be uh, discolored when it comes out and you'll kind of see where those hot spots were. So that's one thing you want to avoid is holding in one spot too long. So the last bullet point we're going to hit is if your pressure has anything to do with your finish or affects what kind of finish you get. The answer here is yes, since this is a direct impact process, your pressure is going to play a factor in how aggressive or how minimal your finish will come out. Now you can mess around with the abrasives a little bit. Like if you want a little bit less aggressive of a finish, use a glass bead. If you want more aggressive of a finish, you can use maybe an aluminum oxide. So so that does have a little bit of the factor in the hand in it, but since it is a direct pressure process where the abrasive is constantly hitting the part, your pressure that you hit with is going to affect that final finish and surface roughness that you do get. 